Tell, tell me what the image quality is like. Great. Yeah, and you can see that, and your screen's big enough to be able to see what's happening there. Because the alternative for viewing is this option. Oh, I like that, but I don't. I mean, I like it only because it's bigger, John. It, it, it. The other big one was is, just fine. Big is good. Big yes. is good. Uh, and uh, it's you know you you pay a small price in that I can't see as well what's coming up next. Uh, and and the titles, uh, the titles are squished up in this in this corner, uh, and that's what I use. the The title of the files is is what I use to to tell me what we're looking at. So full thickness tear. So I'm just going to flick through some of these. You will have seen briefly before, so I won't hang about with them. And some of them are actually not very good. But this is supraspinatus here coming up. This is the great tuberosity. And this is a tear here. I'm not showing it terribly well, but you can see the cartilage. You can see the yes. edge of the tear there quite nicely. Why was there such a crevice or crevasse or a, a, a impression at the start of the video? What is that? Right there. Yeah, this is, that, was the, that was the groove. That was the intertuber. Er, that, that, oh, okay, yeah. I got you. That's a long head right. of the biceps in there. All right. Yeah. All right, so you about. went short axis to long axis. I'm with you. I've just realized I can carry the cursor through on this, on this thing, which probably oh. makes it even easier. <laughs> we can skip through the boring bits. And there, yes, going into long section there, you see it nicely. Uh, see, see, when you say one. boring bits, John, I'm actually watching you manage the, transdu or the, the, the probe, and I'm looking at you refining the, 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 the one pixel thick um bone yeah. you remember <laughs> yeah yes yeah and and some sometimes i'm doing it better than others well, but that's uh, fine i just but you see you're going down through an area of tear so the bone is going to be different but when i'm right the bone is very thin except in this area so when you get and the thing to know is that when you've got let me see if we can go yeah so the, the one time that the uh, bone isn't one pixel wide is when you're actually going through in short axis, when you're going through the insertion of supraspinatus. So, you know, where the, where the bone rises up. Yeah. Then you do get a thicker bone because you are taking an, an angled slice, even though you're looking at the direction of the fibers. And that's because there the fibers are not in, in the plane. Uh, let's go. This was an injection. It's not. I, I looked through that video, so it's not even a good injection. So I won't. Though you probably want to see some bad injections. This I think I called uh, resolving uh, calcinosis. So this was one that where I'd seen the patient previously, and they had uh, calcific tendinosis, and then we saw them again, and they had just this appearance here, with just a little bit of calcium. So I wouldn't be sure that was calcinosis primarily if I hadn't seen the patient before. But that's what, what happens is it just gets better. So it still looks a bit untidy here. Yeah. But, uh, and there's some tendinosis within the tendon, I think, but nothing. And some like periosteal them. issues too. How much, I heard Mark say on the video that there is a certain percentages to all these unique um, uh, image um, presentations, one of which was periosteal defects. And it had a pretty high correlation to at least the sensitivity of, of, a, of a tear. Are you yeah. looking for that or is it just yeah. incidental? No, no, no. You, uh, the supraspinate, the, the uh, target area of supraspinatus is quite complicated and quite tr sometimes the appearances are quite tricky to interpret. And that breakup of the, uh, the quality of the, of the uh, uh, cortex and the periosteum, but I think of it more as a cortex, is, uh, I think it's very useful. The very you know, first video that you had, when, when we first looked at it, had this almost like gravel. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And are we saying that, the, that, that there is some e, uh, avulsive force that is ripping up some of the, 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 cal, the, the calcific anchors within that? Or, and I know I asked you this before, and I'm seeing your face say, you know, I think it's more of just a chemical response from inflammation. Yes? Mm, I, I do not know. I just normally when you get that reactive change, it makes it stronger. 
okay. you think what happens generally like hypertrophies like yeah, you I get, get slaughters or something like yeah, that sure. slaughters uh and all sorts of things that the pull defect the, the changes you get in the in the insertion of the pec major um giving the shape to the um uh to the lateral side of the groove things like that it's, it's that load causing presumably micro trauma at all ages and this then happens not when we get this mostly not when people are doing their most exercise but when they are getting old all right so i'm a degenerative process well i i think the degenerative is seems to be the main driver whether that degenerative process is a degenerative process that then causes micro rupture at that point it just seems unlikely it strikes me that your bone is the most alive part of you probably the most vascularized part of the tendon if you were going to get a, resp a, a healing response anywhere that would be it uh, so i think there is something chemical going on there yeah i'm with you so where uh, were injection this is resolving calcinosis uh anterior more anterior tear uh is this a long video uh yeah no 28 seconds so here we are in long section but not a great great tuberosity and then you've got the biceps there and you see how you've, you've you see the tuberosity fit uh flit away so you've got the biceps now switched to short axis there's the biceps there's some cal changes in uh the uh attachment there Hopefully we'll come back towards it. I'm falling off towards the acromion for some reason. I don't know why I'm struggling, but uh, let's see. So long section, we're going from distal, uh, from posterior to anterior, I think. So as we come through, there we see the, 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 suit, the biceps, no tendon there. So we bring that back, bring the cursor back through this section. I would say it's super tenacious. You're leafing through the the, um, the 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 most anterior supraspinatus fibers, or the or the most yeah. medial supraspinatus fibers, um, looking yeah. for similar echo texture to the long head of the biceps, or 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 you drop off that. No, I'm much more interested in the bone. So oh, I'm oh, oh. just from the shape of the bone here. Yes, I think we're starting long section, somewhat posterior. So I think of it, anti the biceps is the anterior margin. Yes, yes. And posterior, so anterior to posterior is the way I think of it. This is the anatomical neck. Yes. Yeah, subtle thing here. This shape can be due to the fact that you are posterior or it can be due to wear and tear, you know, just degenerative change in the greater tuberosity. But Posterior it, meaning that you're dropping off of the superior facet going to the middle facet or your classic supraspinatus to the infraspinatus insertion. Yeah, but I, okay. I, I'm, yes, essentially, I, I've never really talked about them as in terms of facets, but that's just uh, the name. <laughs> I'm going I'm, back I'm, to the anatomy books, John, but I understand yeah. what you're saying. I'd, I, I just, I just think of it. I'm in ter in my t in terms of how I how I think about it. I am thinking about that. I'm scanning the supraspinatus. I'm referring to the bone, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm looking at the tendon. I'm looking at them always in this in a true long axis, if I can. And I'm at the back of that tendon, and I'm and, and and as we're scanning through there, I'm coming forwards through the tendon, or what what should be a tendon, and I know that I'm going forwards because at some point you see what little greater tuberosity there is there, yes, all the way at this point, and I see a biceps tendon. Yes, that's beautiful, John. Yeah, yeah. you just come back. And you see the greater tuberosity reconstitute itself. And when I'm scanning, I can be almost like an autistic child. You know, it's groove, tubercle, groove, tubercle, just making <laughs> really small movements like that until Thank I've got you. it exactly, you know, perfectly parallel on, on the biceps tendon coming off it or where I think is my basic, my, my true long axis of that anterior bundle of the supraspinatus and falling off it and coming back onto it. Uh, and that's how I interrogate that section here. There isn't much to interrogate because you come up, you've got the biceps there. You, you're moving posteriorly, pointing towards the origin of the supraspinatus. And you're seeing there some 
minor fibers. I don't know if I can freeze that there and bring it back a bit. Uh, you've got a little bit of something here, whether that's a little bit of retained capsule or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure. That would be my guess. Uh, you know, some of that, some of that ligamentous tissue, because biceps looks pretty well seated. So you're still going to have bits of the uh, uh, coracohumeral ligament and the superior cap parts of the capsule are still going to be intact around here. But I, I can't say that I spend a lot of time looking at them. But that's, I think that's quite a nice scan, or certainly the far first part of it yeah. is. Uh, What's this one? What does the title say? Oh, supersomatitis. Oh, this is just tendinosis and bursitis. I'm sure you have seen this one before. Is there a way, John, to that 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 you 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 use to differentiate hypertrophic um, SASD and actual um, uh, fluid, other than just the brightness of it? Very rarely fluid. Oh. Most of the time when you're looking here, that's not fluid. When you see that thickened, you hear people talking about it being fluid all the time and it's like, uh, no, <laughs> if it was fluid, it would go to the dependent point. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Why, why would fluid sit at the top of a sack when you're pressing on it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I understand. Yeah. So, so if it's if, it, if it's fluid, it's sitting somewhere else. When you're looking at a supraspinatus, that's not fluid. Why is the echo texture seemingly darker? Is because, is it because the, the the cells that make up an epithelial layer are more like columns? Okay. Than uh, than they they're not. Yeah. Fibrous, fibrous tissue like this is bright. Yes. Fibrous, fibrous tissue and epithelial tissue like this is dark. And when that it's makes sense. irritated, it's dark and full of water, so it's extra dark. Like, like articular cartilage, yes? Yeah, only softer and less, yes. <laughs> less useful. <laughs> yeah. Right, but, but, but the darkness yeah. in articular cartilage is orientation of the fibers is is that Ori correct orientation that's orientation of the fibers uh presumably it's it must be because um you know it's going to be structure and yeah. fluid content uh that if makes you sense. think what the if you think what the cartilage is like in the uh the meniscus is completely yeah. different you know, that, well, that, keep that, going. That, that, keep, keep going with right. that. Yeah, because anyway, there's so, multiple layers of fascia that can reflect uh, incidentally. Yes. I mean, it, yes. Presumably. yes. If, it, if, it, if it's bright, it's either got lots of boundaries, an awful lot of boundaries. You know, the liver can be quite bright if it's got lots of fat in it. That's not fibrous in the sense that you think about it as being fibrous, uh, but it's it's just a, a lot of a lot of marbles all clean, to get, lying together and, and they're all reflecting sound back so so that's what you get is the marble uh, adipose is that what you were referring to when you said marbles or is it the actual structure in the liver no i, I in, when i'm talking about the yes. liver when no you, i'm with you, you. That, i'm just thinking about multiple tiny targets Cells. Each, yeah okay each of which reflect back uh, a small amount of sound and you know you get enough children in the choir and it's still quite loud <laughs> Or in the room. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> More voices all screaming their heads off when they're pointing in your direction. All uh, right. What's the where are we? Superspinatus. Who switch was this one? So this is this is uh yeah. Yeah, so I think stop it. Everyone talks about this stuff as being fluid. Yeah. Yeah. How can, how can it be fluid? No, I, I, I'm with you, John. It's always puzzled me because, again, that and cartilage, because, you know, we can see it show up dark as well. And, yeah. and, and I like the idea, almost like an endometrius, that that, yeah. that, 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 that is all polypy and it's just absorbing sound like, like uh, cork. Uh, and, well, and it's true, really, because it's, 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 it's not really... Uh, it, it's not absorbing it, but uh, that's me just being pedantic. But yeah, it's it's letting it through. It's just it's uh, like water. 
It's yeah. probably got a reasonably high water content, but it's not fluid. I, I, I'm with you. My brain's got a high water content, but <laughs> it's not very fluid. <laughs> Let's see, I think there was one, just one sliver of this where there was, you actually got a little bit of insight into the verse, but it might not be this video. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Uh, what's this? Uh, it's a nuisance. I'm going to go back to this. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll page between the two because uh, uh, this is a calcific tendinosis injection. Perfectly. I, I actually like what I'm seeing here, John. You don't even need to change page. Yep. Okay. So, this is an interval view, yes, and and I'm seeing long head on the left. This is oh. it isn't actually interview, interval view. It's this is my short axis view of the supraspinatus. Okay. Interval would need subscap. Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the, what I what I call the three tendon view. Yeah, <laughs> because we, I, I'm with you. We we had the three tenors at the time. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember them? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but they were my three tenors, you know. I, I got you. Uh, uh, yes. So that, that's what people call the in interval view is, is my three tenors. My three tenors. The three tendons. And yeah, you're, so you're, you're, you're breaking through the, this, uh, the, the, the bursa that, that's yeah, overlying I'm, the supraspinatus. Yeah, and I'm trying to find the bursal line. And this, this is one where I struggled. So what I did is I put it where I thought the bursa is, where, where that needle looks like it's in the bursa. But actually when I put the fluid in it, it accumulates a little bit too locally. And so I'm not happy that that's actually in the bursa. That would mean you're underneath the bursa. Is that no, correct? No, I'm over the top of it. That's, that oh. fluid is escaping into that. And, and with this procedure, I'm actually using a little bit of local anesthetic there. So, uh, so I'm not too worried about it. But, uh, but yes, I'm, I'm there. I've got the tip of the needle. And I'm moving it around in the hope that the fluid is actually going to slide across. And I want to see it flow this way, ideally, or perhaps wow, that way. Wow, wow. So you're having to differentiate through the fascial layer of the top of the bursa and not yeah. puncture the fascia surrounding the tendon. Well, frankly, I don't care. What I want to do is be in the true bursa, in that infinitesimal yes. thin space in, yes. in some cases. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's there, and that isn't as easy as it as it seems. And then it I'm does just, not seem yeah, easy. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> popping the needle into the calcium itself, or just over yeah, it. you don't just irritate the lining. So I'm deliberately then just poking into the poking the uh, uh, the bit of calcification to to hopefully provide it a reactionary inflammation or to hopefully allow it a way out like it's okay yeah, i just and it's i don't know that it helps but that's what we do when we do barbitage yeah and so what i normally tell my patients is that i can barbitage and lavage this thing or i can just do a standard subacromial injection and in 70 80 percent of the patients they get better perfectly well with just the standard injection. What I tend to do is instead of, but just to kind of stir it up a bit, I just accidentally put the needle up too far and go into the calcium. <laughs> Rather than doing a formal, you see if I do a formal barbitage, then they can be quite sore afterwards. And it's more trauma to the tendon to everything else. And you think if this is a good thing is gonna get better without that, then why do that? I'm not, I don't, I don't charge the patients or I don't charge the companies I work for, for, for more, for more complicated procedures. They just send me the patients and I, and I get, to, I, I, it's really nice. I get to just treat them as best I can. Yeah. Without any question mark over what I do with them. Because Fabulous. in general, my treatments are cheaper than other people's because they tend to need less of them. But you don't have a, um, uh, uh, complexity um, uh, variance as to how much you get paid? No, nope. I, 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 I the firms I work for 
do musculoskeletal, uh, provide musculoskeletal service in an area, and I, I charge them a day rate. I just say, I'll, I'm happy to do work that is appropriate for me. And I just turn up and they, some, some of them give me lots of patients to see in that time. Some of them give me less patients to see in that time. And the ones that I probably get, they get better at value out of me because I can be careful with what I do and what they yeah. find. People who give me less work value me more because I'm able to do better work and therefore it doesn't cost them as much. You know, they t they, patients tend to come and see me and not need very much afterwards. Ah. And so if, if you're being paid, so, some companies I work for are paid tariff for what they do. So then they're interested in volume. Then my main customer is has to pick up the whole bill for the whole area they work in, the whole MSK bill. And so basically, if, if I can do it more efficiently, then they're very happy for me to take my time over it because it means that the patient won't need to see the orthopedics, won't need any other procedures. And I get to spend a little bit of time, work things out properly. And that's half nice hour, deal. half hour, but they give me, but they, they let me go home at three o'clock and they give me some admin time as well. Good. So, uh, and it's, it's horses and courses with other people. I will do, I usually have half an hour if I have to manage the patient you know, take a history and do all the management and do the injections and the scanning. But uh, some places will give me some time to catch up and to do admin. And they're the teams where I can actually think everything through, work it all out, figure stuff out, maybe communicate with the other teams more. Whereas with the teams that jam all the patients in, then are basically they just get, they just get the basics. And, <laughs> okay. and it's, it just depends on their business model. You know, and, and it's not for me to tell them, oh, you have to do it with the elegant business model, because if they're not being paid for stuff they don't do, then then they've got to pay the bills. So, so they then just use me more as a for a diagnostic opinion and procedure procedures. So so it's, it's horses for courses. But but yes, it's, it's nice not having to think, well, I, I don't want to I don't want to charge this patient for a barbitage. Or I don't want to do. I, I want to do a barbitage on this patient because if I just do an injection, it doesn't work. Then they'll, I'll feel bad about charging them for a barbitage. No, I just bring them in. I say, seventy percent chance you'll be fine after one injection. Uh, if you're not, we give you a call at six weeks. If it's not better, or if it comes back after two or three months, which they occasionally do, uh, just come back and see me, and I'll do the full procedure. And, and, you know, we can just say that to them and there's no financial side to it, which is, I think is a luxury because I know in the real world, in the United States, it doesn't work like that. Not for self-payers. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, so, uh, so I think, was this the same one? Yes, I think that's the same one, sorry. Uh, this is... Uh, which was this this might be this might be the same patient where i'm just looking at the calcification so you're coming through there this would have been your diagnostic date that you, that that's might, what you said or or this would have been, been might have been that but more likely it was on the same day uh yes it was on the, this was either another patient with calcific tendinosis sometimes i get lots in a single day uh, uh, or this would be the first scan and then you know i'd scan them take a video and then i might do the do the injection as a separate video uh this one i know you've seen before but it's quite a good one so I'll, i think so you mightn't mind watching this again so this is slightly awkward supraspinatus you can see i can't really get it out from underneath the acromion yeah. as much as i'd like to but you can see there there's a split in the supraspinatus and there's your change. Oh, yes. Fourth axis. Like, I think I went through there a bit fast, so I'll come back. Obviously busy that day. <laughs> so, so yeah, you can see that the, here you've got long axis on supraspinatus. Right. Uh, let's say quite a short view there because it's, uh, uh, if I take this back a little bit, 
Yes, you can see the enchromium's getting in the way there still. Yeah. So either their shoulder was very stiff or they're, they're just not. Uh, but, you know, real breakdown here. And the whole thing is broken down, even though the tear is only one short section, looks like. But when we come into short axis, which we will do in a second, here, you see me flick around there. And you see that looks like a, a small sort of flat rapier like knife cut through the through the tendon coming out of here but you do wonder whether there's actually a breakdown in the in the tendon at this point as well of the entire cross-sectional area your gut says 30 percent um i do you, do never, you even say stuff like that i don't e i don't even say stuff like that uh, all I, I would I would be descriptive. I would say, and I can't quite work out from here where, which side the biceps on. Even but if the biceps was the, this side, I would say the leading edge, the anterior portion of the tendon, looks intact. And then there is general breakdown and the quality of the posterior half of the supraspinatus, and uh, with a small uh, uh, sort of dissection of the tendon sort of split in the tendon uh, at the junction and if i was going to be long-winded about it i would say there's a small split interstitial split in the tendon at the junction between the anterior and posterior portions uh with general some degenerative change in the rest of the tendon but something that looks as though it could certainly proceed with tensile loading and rehab I would say that some, I would want to keep steroid away from I think of it sort of back to front because people come to me expecting an injection. So I'm going, this tendon does not look like you want to bathe it in steroid. Wow, because, because you don't want to weaken it even more and you, you yeah. want the process of what the body is putting it through to restore any amount of, of, of fascial adhesion. Yes, you 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 get there is there while there is contact, there is the potential for some sort of structural recovery. Yeah. So so my view would be that while that's the case, particularly where there's where it's posterior to the leading edge, which I think is a much more important part of the tendon, these degenerative chairs we see them asymptomatically in such a huge population. So posterior less so. Posterior component of the uh, posterior of the leading edge, in yeah. your opinion, has a greater uh, uh, it, its real estate has more value to you as far as protecting it. Let me let me let me show you what I mean because I think it's better if I stop sharing and then if I share again, but I do whiteboard. Uh, I used to teach a long time ago with a uh, one of the leading researchers in, in in shoulder in the UK, a guy called Tim Bunker, and he was probably the first one of the first people in the world to ever use an ultrasound on a shoulder. Uh, also, or, also certainly he's first one of the first people to write about real time ultrasounds um, when he was messing around as a registrar in, in the eighties. So there, there were probably people in the States, certainly in, in the English contingent. And he used to always, he was the first person, you know, for years, you know, uh, people just talked about supraspinatus being a single thing. Uh, yeah. I'm going to draw, that's the supraspinatus bony insertion. I know it's not that shape, but just it, and there's the groove going down there. So you've got biceps coming yes. up here. And he talks about, the anterior portion of the tendon extending up here. So he was teaching this when everyone else was just glad they could see supraspinatus. So there are basically two parts to supraspinatus. You've got all the fibers attaching onto the anterior bundle like that. And then you've got the fibers that go straight to here. Yeah. And yes, you, but I'm embarrassed. Back. I'm embarrassed to say that it was in that webinar that I ever really had it go ding. I didn't know that there was what you're talking about, and and you're talking about it like you learned about it in childhood. We've been teaching. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember t 
teaching uh, people this on a course uh, in 2006. Wow, John. Based on no uh, dissection, but based on your experience in scanning it? No, no, no. This was, this was, this was Tim Bunker, who was this, this surgeon. Okay. He, would, he was, uh, this, is, this is how he used to teach. Uh, and I used to lecture on the physics, and he used to lecture on the, <laughs> on the intimate details of the uh, supersonators on our, on our original, certainly in the UK, the first shoulder ultrasound course that we wow, were doing John. back in. You're an amazing resource. But now, where is posterior you were talking about here? Well, I think of it as yes. this bit of supersonatus. Yes. The big, strong bit. The bit, if you look really carefully at supersonatus, you can see as it as a separate tendon. Yes. Bulky tendon at the front. Almost uh, like the gluteus medius, that, that has a, um, yeah. a, a principal primary fascial, anyway. Yeah, anyway, it has gonna, a yeah. big tendon yes. and a soft thing. And it's yeah. the other way around, you know, the front bit on, yeah, exactly the same. And we often talk about the uh, gluteus medius as the supraspinatus. Yes, bit, yes, thing. I can see that. And this is that. why, this bit is there. It then goes thinner. You know, this, so it's almost a tadpole shape. So As I go in the direction of the infraspinatus interdigitation, yes, so it gets post, thinner. It isn't, in, it doesn't, I've, I, I, I can normally, and you'll see on some of these scans, I can always see super infraspinatus coming over the top of this. So infraspinatus fits like a glove. What about that? Ooh, so you... That. You kind of just rolled your eyes when when he inferred that it 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 braided together. It the there may be some braiding of some fibers, but you see infraspinatus as a uh, in short axis in long yes. axis supraspinatus. You yes. see short axis of, of infraspinatus looks very similar to subscapularis, and you just see. Wow. I want to see that sometime, John. When you see that, save it and share it with me. No, it's it. I, you keep drawing because I'm learning from you here. But yeah. I see it all the time, and and it, it's on loads of these videos. But 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 what I want you to do is get back to these these things you just painted in the infraspinatus. They're yeah. over the posterior component of the supraspinatus, yeah. and yeah. yet before you said you put more value in the pathology of the supraspinatus being in the posterior zone, not yeah. the anterior. So, 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 no, no, the post, the anterior zone yes. is the strong bit. Yes. Yeah. And this tears when you have a fall. Yeah. Okay. When it takes the load. This bit degenerates. I'm sorry, that, that was what I was going to get to. If I, if we go back to this sort of, I, what I think of an old blunderbust. Do you remember the old blunderbust? I don't know that bust? word. Oh, old-fashioned before rifles. They had guns. Oh, you remember the guns oh, that oh, opened oh, up yes. at the end? That they would tamp yeah. in the, 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 the black powder yeah. and stuff they, like that. They would have bell yes. ends. This yes. anterior tendon has a bell end. And that spreads out like almost like Spider-Man's web. So the anterior in, tendon does. The anterior tendon, yeah. It comes in and then it stretches. In its last couple of millimeters, it, it expands like like Spider-Man's web from the old cartoon. As and it inserts into the bone. As it, inserts, as it inserts into the bone and into the groove and into the roof and everywhere. Okay. But it comes down like a blunt, like a, a, a bullet train and then it just spreads out like okay. this squish thing. Okay. So that, that's what happens at the front. But this boundary here, between the front and the back, is where tears, degenerative tears start. So at this point here, I think this is the insertion here, and this is the posterior. These are the posterior bits. It's a test that normally starts here, and presumably is a little partial thickness tear. It gets a little bit bigger, it tears, and it becomes an L shaped tear. So it rips along the boundary between the two muscles and gets, and, and gets broader this way. So it forms a sort of L shape. And then this bit starts to pull back and it forms what, what they call a U-shaped tear. So that's the way I always think of my tears. They are either a little bit of breakdown, they don't have to make that shape, but that's the natural, for me, the natural progression of a tear. It's a little bit of breakdown at the boundary between the uh, posterior and the anterior. A degenerative tear. 
Yeah, a degenerative tear. So 80, in my population, 85 to 95% of tears are degenerative tears, probably. Uh, and they start in this area here and they get bigger posteriorly and they come back and they're often probably full thickness, but because there are so many fibers of impresponators going over the top, people don't, don't think of them as partial tear. <coughs> Fascinating. Yeah. So yeah. it pulls back and you get this shape and this pulls back and then you've got the cable running underneath. I was going to ask you about the cable. Together. That's, that's a reality to you and, and, yeah. and, and you know it exists and it seems to be directly perpendicular in fiber orientation and it seems to actually be one with the, the, the lower fibers or is it within a fascial layer that is separate of, of the fibers of these tendons? Oh, let me have a look. If you've got, uh, if you're looking at supraspinatus in long section, I think he drew it. You've got a layer here. The best place to see this is right at the anterior margin because you see that beautiful thick tendon. Yeah, an yes. unambiguously thick tendon inserting into the uh, into the great tuberosity, and then you've got a layer. Of, you've got the hyaline cartilage there, the black layer. And then you've got another layer underneath it where the fibers don't look as bright, don't look as, as reliable in your standard view. And these fibers, when you look at them in detail, when you start scanning not the body of it, but the internal architecture, you will see that they are more dot-like. You know, so when you, uh, if, when you move the probe, you're looking for... Am I following pixels or am I going from pixel to pixel to pixel? Yeah. So you don't get this. This bit's all stripy. This bit isn't. When you turn into short axis, if I can uh, erase, there's usually a clear button. Clear. clear. I must compliment how well you have drawn today. My land, how you draw with a... <laughs> I'm... I, I'm with you, Mark John. My, my next, my next purchase when I when I'm back at work <laughs> is one of those little pads, so I can do it on a on a on a pad here and have it come up. That's going to be. How, where, where do you get this? What what, what would oh, a person the, look up for? Are they just? We're talking like a pencil on 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 a pad. You get pencil. You you can buy a pencil and pad. I almost got one before Christmas, and then I played with it on my phone. And I thought I'm not going to use this enough to justify it. But I'm, okay. I'm what, what is what is the name of it, John? If you would if you would understand that I am not trying to do anything but facilitate you to appreciate yeah. this these encounters, there will be one showing up from Amazon to you. I just need to understand what it is. What what is? Yeah. And, and I don't want you to feel as though I'm trying to buy your friendship. I know. I but, but, I, but know exactly I do. Where I, from. <laughs> I want but, to know what it is, man. <laughs> I'm. I'm not. Can you not send sure. me I, a link those, just for my no, own curiosity? No. Yeah, I will send you a link, but don't, okay. but don't get me one. I'm one of those people who has to spend two years researching okay. things. Before you find <laughs> well, then do me a favor. Yeah. Consider me desperately wanting one, and right now, which is the leading option that you're yeah. you're holding? Okay, and now keep going here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was I? Uh, yes. When you look in short axis. Uh, and, and and you need to make me find this on your scan. You've got the, the supraspinatus, the, the bursal layer there, the bony layer there, and you've got your biceps sitting there, slightly flattened. Yeah? Anterior is left. Is this side, yeah. Yes. So that's anterior. And that's posterior there. Yeah? Yep. So you've got biceps there. This is your short axis view of supraspinatus, with the bursa going over the top. Yeah? Yes. When you, when you look carefully, you will see that the front of supraspinatus is like that. And you will look carefully and you'll see that there is, you can see the rest of supraspinatus is less, is, is less distinct there. And, and then you'll see a sort of, usually about here, a sort of dark triangle you, where, where you don't seem to be getting as good a picture like that and this tends to slide off sometimes makes a, a proper v thing and this is all black 
And that's all black because that's all infraspinatus. Coming in black. at a different angle. Yeah. And yeah. going over the top, you say, of the supraspinatus. Yeah. And okay. I'm sure I have a video of it somewhere. Uh, yeah. Where I've actually, because sometimes I, I'll I'll be bored, and so I'll just pick them out and yes. show my students which uh, how. Because all you need to do is angle the probe slightly yes. differently. Yes, I'm brighten. certain. I intend to do that. I had to know it was there to even play with it, John. <laughs> now, when you look closely, you will see that there is a band of fibers that looks slightly different running across here, and it's most obvious in this section. And it comes up and it actually runs over the biceps. In a normal shoulder, you will always see that. Yeah? You will I, always I, I, see this band of fibers that flows under there. Yeah? I, I, I completely understand your drawing. I just only wish that I could experientially say, yes, I know exactly what that is, but I will look for it now. Next, and next. It, as I come proximal off of the greater, uh, the, the, the greater uh, tuberosity and, and yep. I start to see the meat or, or, or the fiber of the supraspinatus, I yep. will start to look for below the, 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 the pixels of the fibers, uh, long axis orientation of fibers. Yes, and you'll okay. see them drop up here. And, and you'll see them most clearly when you are absolutely 90 degrees of this. Ah, so absolutely. the brighter that the anterior component is, the yeah. greater likelihood that I'll see the differentiation of those yeah. fibers. Yes, because when, when you are really pedantic, it, uh, they show up quite nicely. Just I, need, I, need, I, need, I need a definition of pedantic. You'd think I would know uh, that, but I... It's, uh, pedantic is, um, you know, it's not Anal? plus or minus. It's, uh, you know, if, if I was saying, if, if we're talking about, if, if I saw you'd written something, and we were just talking about it, I would have, if I was pedantic, I'd have to stop and correct your spelling. I want to be more pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm married to one, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, stick her in charge of the scanner then, because she'd probably do a good job of it. <laughs> she would be, for sure. Yeah, let me see. I'm just looking for a slightly better resolved image uh, on one of these. Let me go. I need a good short axis view of supraspinatus. And I don't think this fella. I'm looking too much at other stuff. No, let's go. This one. Full thickness tear. That's not going to be helpful. We'll just run through this one anyway, because. Oh yes, this this is, was an interesting one. I'll need to have you take me off the drawing, John. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's right. um, I'm talking to myself, aren't I? That's all right. Uh, let me have a look. How can I go? If I go, uh, how do I? Now I do not know how I. If I go there, yeah, that's it. So share screen, and we go back to the desktop. Share that. Are we back on? Yes, now I can see you just fine. I'm pulling up a second display. I don't know if that's going to help me because you, you you talk about having a second display where you are. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I always try and do this with with two displays. So okay, I've got you on a couple of uh, you you're on, on a screen down here, and I've got my big display with the pictures up up okay. on, on there. Uh, what's going on? This is a full thickness tear of supraspinatus, but it's difficult to make out. There's the biceps. Yeah. There. This is actually, I think, a stump. Yeah. So the tear. This meaning a retracted form, component. Yeah. This is one of those unusual ones where the uh, supraspinatus is uh, has pulled off a uh, bit proximal to the insertion. So I think that's the second video. There's another video. Yeah. This is the main video for this one. So this one, I've not scanned it terribly well. There. If you stop there. We go back. Just there. This is biceps. Yes. There's a layer of tissue. Yes. That's what you're smoking. saying is the cable. Yeah. Or cable, capsule, thickening of the capsule, whatever you want to call it. 
I see a lot more of it than they describe in the textbook. So I, I think I'm seeing parts of the parts of the capsule as well as that. I'm not always looking for such. Sometimes you say see something that's quite clearly a cable, ah, a little bit proximal to the insertion, but you can usually make out the capsular layer on a good quality on a good quality scan. You know, with a straightforward patient, you see the capsule rising up over. The long head of the biceps. The long head of biceps coming a layer of tissue that is not quite as well defined in orientation as the front of supraspinatus coming up and rising up over. May I have you also um, assure me that I'm seeing a a um, homogeneous echo above the long head of the biceps in this image, and you would say that's the anterior component of the supraspinatus tendon predominantly and and the tear is in the posterior no this is this is a quite a complicated scan i'm not entirely sure what's going on there i think that's the biceps there he's got grossly thickened bursal layer and capsule and uh, uh okay. coracofumeral ligament and all that governs here so that's this just that's is, just fascial crud and this I'm is with you. this is fascial crud but this is a tear of supraspinatus that uh, supraspinatus there's no real tendon there you so see the calf looks nice and bright total tear of both anterior and posterior bands with retraction the, well i don't uh, i certainly this front part is gone when there's a bit of tendon left at the back i'm okay i'm not entirely sure those are there briefly there are there oh, look at that fibers do you see that yes i do yeah so wow you've got intact supraspinatus yes posterior portion and there's the infraspinatus wow that's so beautiful with this sort of uh <sighs> Low hill shape, you know, bundle, 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 bundle. Much, much like, much like the subscapularis, like you were pointing out. Much like, much like the subscapularis, very oh. similar in uh, in architecture. But you have actually then um, turned the plane yeah. of your of of your scan uh, yeah. a little bit more uh, posterior. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I. Uh, w when I scan these structures, uh, where am I doing? That's probably running in the background. Uh, when I scan supraspinatus and infraspinatus, uh, what I have in my head is, do you know the, you, you know when you palpate the supraspinatus here, if you palpate the supraspinatus fossa all the way back to the back, that's my orientation point. Meaning, meaning that's that's where you aim to be um, to to, to, uh, to the actual vector line of, yeah. of the muscle. Yeah, one of the things I get my students to do at some stage when I'm teaching them, and the particular and, and the slow ones I do it often is I get a piece of a much longer piece of <laughs> of couch roll like that, and I put it round the probe, and I twizzle it round, and this doesn't show it very well. But basically, I get a strap like that, and I put the probe on the on the patient's shoulder, where the greater tuberosity is, and put this on the end of the where the supraspinatus goes, where where the actual muscle belly has yeah. its origin, where, where the origin, the very yes. origin of the muscle belly, and I yes. just put it on like that, and I don't look at the screen, and I show them a perfect picture of supraspinatus. <laughs> very good. You know, and I pull it up like that in the direction yes. the muscle goes. Yes. And we get a perfect scan through supersonators. And you turn the probe round to that grid. And then you get your long section and you roll it round, the greatest tuberosity, and you've got a perfect scan. John, where are you teaching? Uh, I don't. I, I have, I have uh, people come and do. I, I, I give them a fancy title of fellows, but they basically come in and. and and scan and work with me uh, for a day a week because I do most of my jobs one day a week. So some of the time in some of the places, people just come and work with me. These must these people must leave. I, I, they, 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 you have you have changed their life, man. <laughs> well, they, they don't they, they they don't listen. So <laughs> they never they never listen. <laughs> so, but do they leave with a certificate? Uh, they. They're usually doing a course and they get a certificate at the end of it. But, wow. Uh, 
I never even thing. thought of doing what you just did. And I don't even know what a couch roll is, but it looks like a towel to me. The, the paper you pull over the, 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 uh, the couch. We have huh. big rolls of paper that look like elephant toilet paper. Is, it, is a couch what we would call a plinth or a treatment yes. table? Plinth is a couch. Oh, okay. I've got you. All right. So it's the big rolls of paper. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you you used a towel here to indicate your what you would use when you were in the when the I'm with yeah. you. All right. Yeah. All right. Just All right. It, a long, yes. a long piece of thick string. Brilliant. You stick it on the probe, and so long as you remember that the greater tuberosity just sits at the in exactly the same orientation as your lateral epicondyle on a patient. You're amazing, John. You just run yes. up. No, I not, hear you. It's not in the middle. It's at the front, but that's the orientation of it. Yeah, no, I'm and hearing so, you. So it sits there. You put the probe on. Yes. With either, either facing that point at the back to do the short axis or pointing towards it to do your long axis. And that gives you a perfect view of supersomatus. Absolutely. And, and you might, what you're, well, what you're saying is... No matter what position the arm's in. You, 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 you don't pull this out like a protractor yourself. You be no. Mentally, you say, oh, that's where I'm going to be facing this. And yeah. I'm with you. Uh, that's yeah. very valuable, John. And it goes back to what we said the first time we sat and talked is, for me, I have supraspinators on a flat plate. Yes. The whole muscle is just whatever structure I'm looking at. I don't care about the periphery. That I, I've taken it out of the body and put it on a flat plate and I chop it up. And, and all the fancy movement are just make it's like some sort of Einsteinian process to make the universe flat for that structure. I, I'm with you. I, I have the good looking girl from Iponema or whatever, as, as you make the changes, uh, put, putting it on her uh, on the plate. I'm with you. I've got it. I just need to do it more often. This yep. was extremely valuable to me, John. I, I, I would love to, for Greg's sake alone, continue to have you inventory this to say, show Fritz, show Fritz, yep. show Fritz. Uh, yep. And, and um, I intend to scan my wife's shoulder tonight and, and, and go through. Eat. I want to be able to see uh, infraspinatus, supraspinatus. I want to be able to see those, those little areas on the infraspinatus. I want to be able to see anterior, posterior supraspinatus. I want to try to at least look for the, um, the cable and, yep. uh, and, and, uh, and, and that's very valuable. Well, if, if, if you don't manage all those things with your wife, then next time come in and scan her with me uh, and, and link it up. I would love that. Let's let's just plan on that. Um, yeah. She's she's heading back to either either her or my son, uh, and 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 well, I'll plan on on doing that. But you also plan on keeping these uh, these nuggets for me to uh, to to learn from. That's all right. You just tell me uh, if if there's something you read about that's interesting. I can't promise you I've got images of everything, but I but, but I record a lot of video. And there's always something to, you know, if, if there's a structure you've not, you've, you've not seen or you want to have a look how it's scanned, then I've probably got a video for it. If, I, I would tell you, if you just teed up five scans of the supraspinatus, mm. I, I, I would love to sit and watch you just go one after the other after the other, because the structures we've talked about now, I, I would... I, Anyway, anyway, so, so we got down nine oh eight your time. That's all right. Yeah, we're probably <laughs> there. But I've only I've got a a quarter of the way through my list. <laughs> well, then that list is is to show Fritz. Is, yeah. is that list to show Fritz? No, that's just that's just supersonatus. Oh, show me one more, then 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 we'll go. Yeah, let's have a look. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, what's this one? That's the one we just talked about. Uh, that's the same one. Case number. Well, this must have been a busy day uh, with Superspinator Four Fifties Terror. This was. Let's switch over. It's probably more of the same. This is just another big Superspinator Terror. Well, we see we, we, we see the 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 deltoid dropping down into the into the space yeah. on oh and looky there 
yeah no, there's the infraspinatus coming off there you can see it's slightly oblique do you see yep. Yep. see that section there you see those these fibers let's freeze that these fibers here yes when i move through can you see that they are uh, hang on let me think there let's see uh, yeah this section here uh, i was going to point at the screen this section here i'm going to tell you that i think that's a bleak so i know i'm in true long section there's the biceps. Yes. Long biceps. Yes. So this is long in supraspinatus. Yes. So I'm coming through, big, big tear in supraspinatus, big hole, and then something appears on the greater tuberosity. Yes, yes, yes. So is that supraspinatus fibers at the back that have been left, or is it infraspinatus fibers? I think it's the lateral. I mean, the, the lateral. Yeah. I think it's the infraspinatus well, fibers. Do you get a sense that it's coming in at an angle? When I do that, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you I, get I a can... sense of it running across the screen. What we talk about always following the dots, and do they do they move to the side? Yes, they, they dots seem to move to the side. Yeah, they seem to They're conveyor up and to the right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they have to be. They have to be coming at a different angle. Yes. Yes. So then supraspinatus. I'm I'm with you. Yeah. If I'm true on supraspinatus. But the footprint that that goes down into would be what I guess I would see, at least textbooks would say, is the middle facet because the inferior facet is supposed yeah. to have teres yeah. minor, like, like, like there's three specific places. No. But what but I'm, what I'm not far, so there's biceps. Yes. So you've only come back that far. Yes. You're still in infra, this is still supraspinatus up here. Yes. So in long axis. So this yeah. is still the footprint of supraspinatus. Yes. But it's super, foot that's torn back. And yes. infraspinatus is just the, inf the su superficial infraspinatus fibers have just slumped down into that space. Oh, the, the, those would have been actually on top of the fibers that would be perfectly um, represented in long axis if they yeah. had not been retracted. Yeah, and they'd probably be less edematous, so they'd be thinner. So you wouldn't really notice it so much. Yes, no, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I see that. Um, I will tell you that everything that 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 is presently out there seems to imply that they interdigitate, at least in 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 what I've seen. Though real world is showing me differently here. Yeah, the real world <laughs> is just. And I wish I had. I don't bother taking any uh, video of of normals. But you see this in Norman, you can follow the infraspinatus like a tendon reaching over the supraspinatus and you see the fibers completely uh, patent and as a, as a separate structure. And I'm sure when they dissect them, there is some interdigitation as there is with everything, you know, in nature. But, but the vast majority of the fibers just go crashing in and form a nice little, like they're two little Dutch caps that sit over each other, yeah. you know, like, like, like your fingers sat like that. Yes. Exactly. That's what I see every day as supraspinatus. So that's, that's what's there. Uh, yeah. There you go. There you see it. Wow. See the infraspinatus there? Uh, is, so infraspinatus is multipinnate? Yeah, yeah. Certainly, when you get a little bit of uh, edema going on there, you can see it. But you see, you, it's everything is multi pinnate when you think about it. Yes, 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 yes. Even a single pinnate has 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 different um, fascial yeah. attachments. Yeah, but this is this is very infraspinate is very markedly like that, and and routinely like that. I, I never had put that together. Maybe because I just never have had the resolution. Maybe my maybe my slice thickness was so incredibly off that it, that that it just grayscaled out, John. <laughs> well, you well, if you think about how wide that gap is, that's a fraction. This that that's a centimeter. So a millimeter is half of one of those spaces. Uh, so this is less than half a millimeter wide. Yes, yes, yes. So so you're down towards the point. That, that's that's going to be. Uh, less than 0.5. So you can lose that when you are, certainly if it's any smaller than that, this is going to have some edema in it. Uh, so it's going to be widened up, the, these things. But you lose that when you aren't precise. 
it's it's in knowing you that I care. That 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 that's that that that's the bottom line, and and my images are going to be forever better because of that. <laughs> or at right. least, if if you do see mine in the future, and you go, just think of what that would have looked like if he wasn't thinking. <laughs> but I, but I, I love this. I, I love this picture. I just think it's so pretty. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and nobody so, would know what that is. I mean, I would be saying that subscapularis uh, yeah. if 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 I would if I would be seeing that, and somebody had me on a quiz. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, well, maybe I should put it in the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good for me, John. You've promised me a link to something, so I want to see that, and I'm going to let you go. Um, yeah, you're going to send me a link to something uh, via oh, yeah. email or something, yeah, yeah. and um, and and then. Today is Thursday. You pick the day that works for you um, next week, if you're okay to... Um, well, we pencil in next Thursday. If, if my I'll wife find me. Yeah. Uh, next Thursday, and we'll do it 8 o'clock your time, 12 o'clock mine. Yeah, I think so. If, uh, and, uh, unless you want to stream stuff and you think it might be difficult, in which case we can push it out either to the weekend or have it earlier in the day, if you can do that. I, I will send you an invite for eight if that works on Thursday. And if it doesn't work, we'll stay in touch. Um, if, if, if I we'll could, do, I'm sorry. And we'll, and we'll grab a slot at the weekend. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, and then save as much as you can to, 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 to share with me. And I may come up with questions, but I yeah. will try to have a shoulder here to show you just how incredibly amazing I am at scanning with the Clarius. Be good, good. buddy. See you later. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>